Tell me about the day. The day was on October 2000. I was from a funeral from Francistown, mm -hmm. coming to Haboroni. Then I got a lift from a certain couple, and we drove to Haboroni, 60 kilometers away from Haboroni. We, ha we were involved in an accident. Yes. But fortunately, we were not hurt. Then those couple, they helped me to get another lift to Haboroni. Then I got a lift from a certain man, and we drove. Mm -hmm. You know, I love talking to people. I tried to talk to him while he was a bit busy. Yeah. And on the way, because I'm a very sensitive woman, on the way I sensed something. Yeah. Then I told him, um, can you stop? And he didn't respond. He didn't say anything. And he drove. Then I asked him again, can you stop? I want to get out of this car. Um, he didn't stop, then I don't know what happened. It's not easy to, to explain. Mm. Then I told myself that I should get out of the car one way or the other. Then I threw myself out of the car. I jumped out of that car. The moving car. The moving fast car. You know how we drive in our country, Botswana. <laughs> and, you know, I was, I collapsed. And after some time, I didn't know where I was. Yeah. It was around 11 in the evening. You know, I was just alone in the bush. And I heard the dogs barking. Then I told myself, ah, I'll follow those dogs. Yeah. Then immediately, I think it was at the bar somewhere. Then I heard people talking. Mm -hmm. And I screamed and shouted, Kikupatuso, please, I need help. And people came to, to rescue me. And um, I was taken to the nearest police station because I was terribly injured. My back was terribly injured. I was taken straight to the ICU. Mm. That is uh, an incredible story, Peggy. Um, when did you become blind? Um, I was born totally blind. So not partially blind? Not you partially have never blind. never seen? No. Stayed in, a, in, a, in the dark. <laughs> that makes your, your story even more amazing. Um, and we'll come back to it in a second. But first, give us a bit of insight into your life. Can you share with us some of the challenges that people living with a disability of blindness, such as yourself, face? Um, you know, to live with disability is not easy. Yeah. It's not even a joke. Especially in our country, it's not easy. I'll just touch on, because we are surrounded by challenges. Um, I'll just touch three or two because of time. Mm -hmm. um, transport system in our country is not user-friendly, especially for people uh, using wheelchair, mm -hmm. even for us blind people. 
For instance, just to go to work, it's, it's a big challenge to move around. It's a challenge I can't um, take a combi to work or a taxi. Yeah. I'll need somebody to assist me. Coming to our education, the education system does not cater for people living with disability, mm -hmm. especially blind people and deaf people. We have to be taken to special schools because in normal schools, there are no braille machine to assist. Even our teachers, teachers in normal schools, they don't know sign language. And they may, you know, life is very tough for people living with disability. That's why many of us are not that educated. When we go to the hospital, hey, it's, it's, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's a challenge. Um, our medication, they don't favor us. Um, like most of our doctors, they don't know sign language. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the, the I'll just show you quickly, the, the medication. Like for instance, if, if I want to drink this medication, um, for you people it's easy to know that this is what. But they are not, labeled, mm -hmm. because then I have made it easier for me to know that this is paracetamol and expiry date is September 2017. Be even the condoms. Hold them up. Hold them up. Because... <laughs> For you people, um, it's easy to know the expiry date. But for Peggy, it's not easy, unless if it's labeled in braille, like um, it's written, let me check, sorry. Expiry date, 2020, hmm. October. Hmm. It's it's not easy when they're not labeled. Those are some of our challenges. And going to the parents, going to the parents, I don't know if, anyway, some of the parents, they have this mentality of hiding their children living with disability. They don't love us the same like other children. I don't know if it's because they are ignorant or what. Um, the sensitive part of it, when we reach our menstruation or periods, um, they, they take us to, to the doctors so that we can be injected. Mm. And the other sensitive thing, when we want to have our own children, mm. I don't know if they are protecting us or what, they take us again to the doctors so that we don't have our, we don't have children. They, in, they take us to the doctors so that we can be injected. And they are fiddling with God's nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And the other thing with our doctors, um, especially there's this um, private and confidential. Mm. Um, we talk about HIV. When I have to go to the testing center, I need to be with somebody in the room because um, for you people who can see, you'll be able to see your status yeah. if you are HIV positive or HIV negative. Yes. But for Peggy or for anybody who cannot see, mm. you'll have to ask somebody or you'll have to rely on somebody to tell you your results. And where, you know, there's no privacy at mm, all. Yes. Even for the deaf people, it's just the same. Mm. So Peggy, what you're saying is that for a person living with, a, with disabilities, especially in your experience in Botswana, a life of independence is very difficult. It is very, very difficult. Mm, I can only but imagine. Mm. Peggy, let's go back to the story that you shared at the beginning. You can't see. You have never seen. And yet in this moving vehicle, you don't know where you are. You throw yourself out of the car. What made you do that? Where did the courage come from to do that? Hey, Ma, it's hard to explain very, very hard, yeah. but the courage was from God, and again, the way I was raised, the courage was how my parents planted the seed. Mm. Um, you know, I was between life and death. Then I told myself, here, if I cannot take a step of faith, mm. I am going to be raped. And maybe again, I'll be killed. Mm. Then, if it means dying, let it be so. Rather that way. Mm. Rather that way. That's why I ended up um, taking that decision to save myself. It's, it's shocking, actually. It's, it's shockingly amazing. And I, I want to go back to your parents. You, you mentioned that um, a lot of parents of children with disabilities don't empower them uh, to be able to grow up and, and live at least somewhat independent lives. Tell us about your childhood. Tell us about your parents, since you have said that your, your parents planted a seed in you that, that actually bore fruit at that moment when you needed it too. Um, like I said, I was born blind in Botswana from Serowe, and I was raised, um, we are eight children, I was raised in a normal way, mm -hmm. just like my siblings. My parents taught me to do domestic work, oh, yeah. like um, cooking, cleaning. Those old days, mm -hmm. we used to go to the river to fetch water. Um, even the firewood. Mm. And I was taught to do anything. Mm. That's how I, uh, you know, that's how I believe I'm a woman because of my parents. Mm. And I grew up, then I went to school from primary level to senior secondary. Mm -hmm. Then I went to, after, after finishing my senior secondary, I went to 
Bulawayo. Mm -hmm. And one thing I still remember is the words from my father, because he's the one who took me to Bulawayo. Yeah, what, what were you doing in Bulawayo? I was doing a secretarial course. Mm, okay. And he told me, my daughter, you are blind, and you are going to a foreign country. And God will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. Mm. And those words, even up to now, they are still stacking in me, and they are carrying me through. Mm. That's why I managed to settle well in Zimbabwe. Mm. Peggy, what motivates you? every day when you wake up? Um, let me tell you, now I have accepted myself. Mm. Um, I know I'm blind, and maybe I am going to go to the grave um, being blind. And every day when I wake up, I tell myself, meaning, meaning, when you are left in the sun, you have to take yourself to the shade. Every day when I wake up, I tell myself, I am fearfully wonderfully made. <laughs> All the challenges, I know I am going to face challenges, mm. but I don't want to dwell in those challenges. And actually, I love challenges because they have made me the woman I am now. I told myself I will make it. Peggy, just quickly, if you have one thing that you can tell somebody facing a life of disabilities, and in fact anybody, about overcoming challenges, please give it to us. Share with us. What I can say to people living with disability out there, or anybody. Your future is in your hand. Your life, you have the key for your life. If you want to lock it, you can do that. If you want to unlock it, you, you can do that. Tell yourself, you are a hero. If you have been sleeping, this is the time to stand up and walk and know that there is nobody from heaven who will come and put bread in your table. You know, if... If Peggy can make it without ice, if Steve Wonder or Debo or you, you can mention them, Steve Kikana. If they can make it, why can't you do it with your eyes, with everything? If President, if President Nelson Mandela wrote books in prison, why can't you do the only thing, you have to stand up and know that you can be a hero. Mm. I am a hero myself. Mm.